Work your chest really, really hard. You're gonna stimulate a lot of muscle fibers. Do everything you're supposed to do in the gym. Immediately after, have that protein, have those carbs. Today I wanna to give you four tips to grow your chest fast. These tips will help you build a strong chisel chest into your 40s and beyond. Quickly, before I get into this actual video, I wanna say thank you guys, all right? Why am I thanking you? All right, I've been a part of Live Anabolic in this channel since we had 6,000 subscribers on the channel. We are currently over 500,000, so over half a million subs over the past few years. It's been a great blessing to be a part of that journey, and you guys are responsible for making that happen. All right, so on behalf of Mark and myself, we wanna say thank you all for making this happen. We appreciate you watching all of our videos, and I'm gonna ask that you do one thing. At the end of this video, because I would love for you to watch this video all the way through, all right, because I wanna help you build that big chest. But at the end of this video, if you'll go down and leave a comment and let us know how long you've been following our channel, all right? How long you've been a subscriber, and also some of the things that you've gotten out of the channel. I would love to hear some of those things, all right? And lastly, if we've helped you in any way with our information, whether it be workout, nutrition, sleep, anything at all, I would love for you to share this video. Share this video, share some of our others with some of your family members, some of your friends, just we wanna continue to help as many people as we can. So I just really started thinking about this after I saw that half a million. Half a million people is a lot of people, all right? But when we're talking about billions of people in the world, it would be really cool to help even more people. So I would love for you to be a part of helping us grow and sharing some of our videos. All right, with that said, let's get back to our chest talk. So when you're working your chest, the first thing you need to focus on, when you're doing your chest exercises, you need to make sure you're using a full range of motion. All right. I see far too many people doing a lot of half reps. I'm talking about stopping at 90 degrees on the press, going right back up. 90 degrees, going right back up, right? Same with cable flies, maybe coming right out, straight back. All right, here's the benefit to doing a full range of motion. There's several benefits. One is when you do go all the way down at the bottom, not only are you gonna recruit more muscle fibers, which is gonna help you build more muscle, the more muscle fibers you're activating, the more are being worked, the stronger they're going to become, and the bigger they're going to become, all right? But the other thing is there's something called stretch-mediated hypertrophy. So you wanna make sure you're growing muscle from the furthest stretched position. Meaning, on a bench press, for instance, if we're all the way down here, two things are gonna happen. One is you're getting that stretch-mediated hypertrophy. It's stretching all the way, so the hypertrophy is gonna start in the fully stretched position. Number two benefit is it's going to help prevent some injuries. Here's why I say that. If you're constantly doing a bench press here, this half rep pressing, you probably see a lot of people do this, all right, kind of just pushing, pushing, pushing. What happens if you're in a real world situation and you're having to move something, you're having to push from down here? You're not used to working in this bottom position. All right, so when you're strengthening this shortened position and that's it, anytime you start getting down here, your muscles aren't used to that full stretch. That can lead to tears, weakness in the joints. All right, so when you're constantly stretching, you're strengthening the full range of motion. So yes, make sure you are using a full range of motion. All right, number two is utilize some isolation exercises. So Compound exercises are the king to most muscle growth. All right, what's the difference? Compound exercises are multi-joint exercises. Your bench press, your incline bench press, all of those things, your dips, all right? All of those are great for actual growth. So that's gonna allow you to load more weight, which is gonna stimulate even more muscle fibers, which is gonna lead to more overload on the muscle, which is gonna lead to more overall growth. But that's not all you need to be doing, all right? Because here's the thing when it comes to your chest. It's designed to push things away from your body, but also come across your body, all right? So if all you're ever doing is pushing away, you're doing standard bench press, you're doing incline bench press, and thinking that's gonna be enough for growth, 
Well, you are gonna get some growth, but you're not gonna get maximum growth, optimal growth. All right, so yes, you wanna do some cable flies or dumbbell flies, different types of isolation exercises within each workout, all right? So typically I like to do two pushing exercises and two isolation exercises. That's how I like to structure my chest workouts, all right? And if I feel like I'm up for a little bit more, I'll do a third compound exercise, but typically two isolation exercises is gonna be enough. So that could be a high to low cable fly, low to high cable fly, or a mid cable fly, anything like that, but that's gonna be a great isolation exercise. All right, so now the third tip is you need to train close to failure. So what do I mean by that? Basically what I mean, let's say you're working out with your bench press and you're doing eight to 10 rep range, right? Your eight to 10 rep range, those are gonna be your heavy sets. You wanna push yourself and challenge yourself within the eight to 10 rep range. So what I mean by going close to failure is typically RIR is called reps in reserve. Leave about two reps in reserve. Meaning, if you can do, if you're stopping at 50 pound dumbbells, 50 pounds, you're stopping at 10, but you can do probably 15 reps or 16 reps, the weight's too light. You wanna find a weight that you can probably do two more than your recommended rep range. So for instance, again, eight to 10 reps, and if you do 50 pounds, you can probably do 12 with it. You're thinking that's pretty heavy. You still stop at 10. I don't want you going to failure. You never wanna go to failure with every set. All right, so you wanna stop about two reps short of failure. That's why I'm saying train close to failure. And two reps in reserve is typically my recommended amount. So that means if you're doing four sets, the first one you're stopping two reps short. So let's say 50 pounds. 50 pounds, you know if you went to 55 pounds, you would probably fail at 11 reps. That's too heavy. You want that two rep range buffer because you want to fail there because the second set, you're going to be fatigued, all right? Your central nervous system is already going to be firing. Your muscle is going to start getting weaker. So what's going to happen on that second set is you may get the same rep range, but it's going to be even harder to hit it. Then you're gonna get in the third set. You may even fail at 10 reps. It may be heavy enough at that point. Even if you're stopping at 10 and you think, you know what, I still had another rep left. By the time you get to that fourth rep, usually that is 100% failure within the eight to 10 rep range. So hopefully that makes sense because it can be really confusing when I say train close to failure but not going to failure. If you fail with the last set of your working set, that's perfectly fine. The problem I see with a lot of guys or a lot of people in general is they think they have to fail with every single set. They'll go super heavy, fail with the first set. You know what, let me add five pounds and then fail again. Fail again on the third, fail again on the fourth. You don't wanna stimulate your muscle that much, all right? That's annihilating your muscle. So you don't wanna annihilate it, you just wanna maximally stimulate it. So there's a big difference there, all right. Tip number four is maximize your post-workout recovery. All right, you're working hard in the gym, you had a great chest workout, and you put everything into that workout, now it's time to replenish. All right, so typically that means good lean protein, about 25 grams or so for most people is gonna be sufficient, and get some carbohydrates. I like carbohydrates post-workout. Again, I'm talking about the goal being maximum chest growth. If you wanna grow, you want to optimize your nutrition. Nutrient partitioning is a huge thing when it comes to optimizing muscle growth. And that's what we're trying to do with your chest. Trying to grow your chest, you're gonna work your chest really, really hard, you're gonna stimulate a lot of muscle fibers, do everything you're supposed to do in the gym, immediately after, have that protein, have those carbs, and you're gonna feel a lot better. You're gonna give your body the nutrients it needs to start the recovery process. All right, so yes, that is important. So again, I also wanna stress, post-workout recovery is important, but so is overall recovery and overall nutrition. Because it's not just about the one day you're working chest or the two days a week you work chest. When your goal is growth, you're gonna work your chest. Typically, I recommend twice per week, a little bit more frequency when you're really trying to focus on a specific body part. You're gonna work it, you're gonna optimize nutrition afterwards, but you also wanna optimize nutrition 
seven days a week. You wanna make sure you're getting enough sleep. You wanna make sure you're taking a couple rest days off during the week just to maximally recover and make sure you're allowing your body enough time to rest, recover, grow, replenish, refuel for energy, for more intense workouts, all those things. All right, so hopefully this all makes sense to you. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about anything at all. Other than that, man, get busy, get after it, and God bless.